together near the point where the balloon dropped. But there's only one problem with this idea. At a normal pace, a person can walk about a kilometer in 10 minutes. Yet, these individuals are kilometers apart. Too far apart to have been together at the impact point 10 minutes ago. But they are covered in exactly the same color paint. So they must have been there. This tension, this paradox, is called the horizon problem. And it's only by finding a solution to the horizon problem that we can properly understand why the universe looks and behaves the way it does. So what aspect of the universe can be tweaked to sort this out? To rescue the Big Bang Theory, cosmologists must work out why regions of the universe too far apart to have ever been in contact have so many similarities. Think about it this way. How can we explain three people covered in orange paint who are too far apart to have been at the site of a paint bomb 10 minutes ago? We can't change present reality. Three individuals, kilometers apart, covered in exactly the same color paint. And we can't change the time at which the paint balloon fell, 10 minutes ago. But we can change the rate at which they diverged away from the impact point. A short-lived but incredible burst of speed away from the impact point just after the balloon fell does the trick. By running from the impact point, the three victims move a huge distance from the scene in a very short time. When their pace slows to a walk, the final position and speed give no hint that they were ever at the impact point. Only the paint gives the game away. And likewise, some cosmologists believe the early universe went through a similar burst of speed just after the Big Bang. This modification to the Big Bang theory is called cosmic inflation. It solves the horizon problem without messing up with the good bits of the Big Bang. Inflationists believe that this sudden, massive expansion of the young universe didn't last very long. A tiny, immeasurable fraction of a second. But in that time, the universe expanded in size by a factor of at least 10 to the 26. A surge of growth just after the Big Bang would mean that distant corners of the universe were once together, explaining their uncanny similarity. It seems the horizon problem is neatly solved. Break out the champagne. Cosmic inflation has saved the Big Bang from embarrassment. The only problem is, there is absolutely no observational evidence for cosmic inflation. None at all. And believe me, people have been looking for it. Evidence, proof by observation, is really what science is all about. Without it, it's all just theories, waffle. You might think that without observational evidence, cosmologists would find it hard to accept inflation theory as a solution to the horizon problem. But within cosmology, there has been widespread acceptance of this useful but unprovable theory. In fact, if you read the small print, quite a lot of cosmology is just theories. Theoretical physicists, like myself, are doing nothing but playing an elaborate guessing game. It works like this. I see a cat going inside one end of a drain pipe. Then, I see an unsuspecting mouse going into the other end. I hear a squeak, a meow, and a crunch. 
as a person with a good grasp of the behavior of cats and mice, I can come up with a theory for what happened inside that drain pipe, even though I didn't actually see it. My theory is that the cat caught the mouse, ate it, and found it very tasty. Of course, because I didn't actually see what happened inside the drain pipe, this is only a theory. Anyone else is perfectly entitled to propose a competing theory based on the same evidence. They may decide that the mouse is a fighter. They may notice that the cat came out with a limp and argue that the mouse fought off the cat and is alive and well. The game is on. It's up to anyone interested to provide the evidence in support of their theories. The debate can rage for years, with new evidence pushing theories one way or the other. The beginning of the universe is like the cat inside the drain pipe. Because it took place billions of years ago, we can't exactly see what happened. But we can use the clues, the CMB and the expansion of the universe, to produce theories. Cosmic inflation is just one theory for what happened inside that drain pipe. Other theories have been proposed only to disappear into obscurity. So I'm entirely entitled to come up with my own solution to the horizon problem. Which is exactly what I did. I came up with this solution after one of the best parties I've ever been to. The next morning I was walking in the rain feeling awful. Terrible headache, a dreadful taste in my mouth, but there were fireworks in my brain. You never have your best ideas in your office. Don't believe what they tell you in school. The theory I came up with on that cold, wet day shook the world of mainstream science. I don't think you have to be stuck behind a desk in an office or a lab to have good ideas. I came up with a new solution to the horizon problem walking across a muddy field in the pouring rain. If you need further proof, I developed some aspects of this theory on vacation in Goa. I call it VSL for varying speed of light. Although some of my colleagues claim that it stood for very silly. One of the central tenets of modern physics is that light traveling in a vacuum is the fastest thing there has ever been and will ever be. Nothing can travel faster, no matter how hard we try. We can slow down a light ray by making it go through a medium, such as water or glass. But in a vacuum, light always travels at the same speed, 300,000 kilometers per second, or 186,000 miles per second. Fast enough to circle the Earth seven and a half times in a single second. We keep on getting this figure, no matter when, where, or how we measure it. 